I am Noriko Bull, and this is what I do. Apparently, the former government didn't have any money to help the poor because they were too busy paying off a massive payroll potted with hundreds of needless employees, including a director of public parks. Yes, Nandalal explains. You have some jobs I never hear about. For example, head of public parks, a man getting $500,000 take home a month, all his light bill, phone bill being paid. He has guards at his house, his internet being paid. He has um, a driver and a car. He gets a duty-free allowance in an A grade, whatever that means, I presume is the highest type of vehicle. And he gets um, a gratuity of 2, 22.5% every six months. And this is a guy, when I find out, is hardly ever in Guyana. But he is the director of public parks. Well, what is that? What is that? And you have hundreds of those creations all over. That man has since been identified as Larry London, a PNC executive and co-owner of the now defunct Homestretch Development Inc., a single-purpose company created by the coalition to overlook the controversial Durban Park project in 2016. However, everything began to fall apart when news reports revealed that the cost for the wooden eyesore exceeded one billion Guiana dollars. The government eventually took on hundreds of millions of dollars in debt owed by HDI to contractors after the company folded. An audit office probe into the company launched in 2017 has yet to be completed. Almost three years later and no results. Hmm, I wonder why. And continuing on the topic of ridiculous political appointees, director of sport Christopher Jones has been told to pack his bags. This was even after he had decided to renew his contract in late March. He didn't do a terrible job as sports director, but for the past four plus months, he and former AFC golden boy Sheridan Duncan had been idiotically trying to peddle the coalition's elections narrative during his nightly up new AFC TV program. Anyway, Minister Bondi Lyons sent Jones his dismissal letter this morning. On Sunday, President Van Diel had his first meeting with his counterpart, Suriname's recently elected president, Chandrika Prasad Santoki. This week, representatives from the two sides will meet to create an auction plan on several strategic areas for the two presidents to meet again in October 2020 in Paramaribo. Under the umbrella of a strategic dialogue and cooperation platform, the two leaders seek to increase cross-border cooperation with more commercial linkages, a stronger emphasis on border security and supporting sustainable regional development. This includes solid discussions on the construction of a quarantine bridge. Nine one one. what's your emergency? Hello? Please help! Somebody just stole my car! Calm down, sir. It says here you're calling from Agricola. Are you injured? No, I'm okay. I parked my car to run in the shop and get some top-up and this might just jump in my car and drive away. Don't worry, sir. Just activate the tracker in your car and give me the location. I will send the police unit. Which tracker? Wait, you don't have a GPS tracker in your vehicle? No. Cheek, cheek. Hello? Sir, you're breaking up. Hello? Cheek, cheek. Some people are real amateur. Just 16000 for a GPS tracker at Triple B's and still he ain't got one. Call 68283-26 and get your tracker installed today. Perfect. There is some wicked person out here lying to poor people. First, it was Granger's old house. Now, it's the PPP office in New Amsterdam. This morning, dozens of Burbicians swarmed the office after rumors circulated that the PPP was distributing $50,000 to families in need. The PPP confirmed that the rumors are false. They are not giving out money, nor hampers. Nevertheless, over the weekend, President Fandio did declare the government's intention to allocate 4.5 billion Guiana dollars to be distributed to the nation's households. However, the government has not announced a distribution date as yet. 25-year-old bus conductor Kwame Dalton of Tamari died in an auto accident early this morning on the Suicide Public Road. Reports are that the car he was riding in lost control and crashed into the median at the Suicide Junction. The other passengers, including the driver, have since been hospitalized. 
Saturday evening, residents of Garnett Street, Campbellville, beat the doggy doo-doo out of a would-be car thief. He was caught red-handed trying to hotwire a Prado around 7pm. When the owner of the vehicle raised an alarm, within minutes the SUV was swarmed with citizens who had nothing but a good thrashing for the man. He was only able to escape a further beatdown by jumping into a trench for safety. Eventually, the police were summoned and he was arrested. Here's another reminder that we've been cheated when it comes to the oil. Rystart Energy, an energy research and business intelligence company, projects that ExxonMobil will be able to place one FPSO offshore Guiana every year for the next 10 years. The Norwegian firm projected that to do so, ExxonMobil would be expending around 50 billion US dollars in project sanctioning in the period. The US 50 billion dollar figure does not include the funds already partitioned for Lisa Phases 1 and 2, which have already been approved. It is meant for the 14 discoveries made after the Lisa field on the starboard block. If developed to such a degree, Kiana will be among the top 20 oil producing nations in the world. BM Soat is Guiana's number one auto dealer. Visit their showroom at Lot 9 Crow Street, Georgetown. Don't be shy. That $800,000 you have saved up can get you behind the steering wheel now. Call them on telephone number 231-8451. BM Soat Auto Sales. It's your turn to drive. Now, let's take a look at news in the region and around the world. Today, Trinidad and Tobago went to the polls. There were 146 candidates from 19 political parties and four independent candidates contesting today's election. According to the nation's elections commission, more than 1.1 million people are eligible to vote. It remains to be seen what voter turnout will be given the concerns about the Rona. However, initial polls show a small lead for the incumbent PNM, led by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley. And turning to the Middle East, Lebanon's Prime Minister announced his government's resignation on Monday, citing the August 4th explosion that killed at least 163 people, injuring more than 6,000, and had left over 300,000 homeless. In a televised address, Prime Minister Hassan Diab announced that his whole cabinet would resign and promised to punish those responsible for the explosion. He also said he would request early elections. But this might not be enough for many ordinary Lebanese. The explosion was the last straw in a long, drawn-out crisis over the collapse of the economy, corruption, waste, and dysfunctional governance, and they have taken to the streets, demanding a complete overhaul of the political system. Take advantage of this fresh business opportunity. Become a digital top-up vendor with Cellular Plus and earn some extra cash. No fancy smartphone or internet required. To show up with your Mongo Belter and you're good to go. Call them on telephone number 685-3109 and find out about their special offer. And now for our weird news story of the day. According to the UK son, 45-year-old Malcolm MacDonald was just an ordinary man until one day he caught a blood infection that turned his fingers, toes, and lowly black. In fact, the father of two said one day the infection caused his willy to fall clean off while his, uh, two bodies remained in talk, but Professor David Rolfe from London's University College Hospital said, had no fear, Malcolm, we'll grow you a new one. About two years ago, Rolfe performed an arm graft procedure to regenerate McDonald's manhood in two years, which was considered a first of its kind procedure. The operation, which cost 65,000 US dollars used a skin flop on McDonald's left arm. Doctors were able to even give his new member its own nerves and blood vessels. They even put in two inflatable tubes in it so he can stand at attention. Unfortunately, doctors do not believe that the, it, the member is a uh, fully functional, if you understand what I mean. <laughs> Nevertheless, he now awaits another procedure to unite his new willy with his old two bodies. Moving on to our uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Guiana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. You give your responses in the comments and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Friday's question was, should we reopen the sugar estates? Yasin Etheridge said, can Guiana compete with beet sugar on the international market? Is this move economical or more than less sentimental to appease PPPC sugar workers? 
Richard Shaw said, Sugar is important to our people. A lot of generations were fed, educated, and elevated because of it. But to take it is hard without giving anything in return. Yes, sugar needs a whole new way of management, and if the reopening can facilitate that, it can be good. Renee Wilson said, I think maybe one or two should be open. As a sugar worker myself, it would cost the country billions to reopen all the estates. However, if the government can bail out the estates that is operating today, they can stand on their own two feet. And Viper P said, Reopening these sugar estates is an economically unsound decision, especially when one, we cannot compete with world market price. Two, the world attitude towards sugar has changed, seeing it as unhealthy and consuming less. And three, cheap and healthy alternatives are available. Good answers, people. So tonight, I leave you with this question. Often, a political appointee is usually selected due to their skills and expertise in a subject that the government needs their help dealing with. In Guyana, the position is often abused as a means of enriching friends and family. So with this in mind, should political appointees be abolished altogether? If so, what sort of selection method should be used instead for their positions? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good, we'll feature it in Tuesday's episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out tomorrow for another. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!